We have 19. Um, it was taught to inhale when you started smoking and then I discovered that cigarettes have flavor. And I didn't know that before. So you find the flavor that you like, but uh, yeah, all my friends used to smoke. So I started smoking then. My smoking habit began in my later teen years. I was 17 years old, you know, I was at, at the same time that drinking and clubbing came along. So I think it became a habit when I was about 19, when I was um, in university, but yeah, I was 16 when I started. And I was taking puffs just like you were, and then I learned to inhale. Cigarettes had flavor, and yeah, it's been a downward spiral since then. I have never smoked. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I don't think I will either. I actually, my dad is a very heavy smoker, so um, at, at least he was, he used to uh, be a heavy smoker. So, uh, and from like a small age, I was always like that, the health implications were always in my head um, and like I was taught of the health implications and I was worried for my dad's health so I sort of tried to get him to quit because of the health implications that's in my head that I feel like I'm doing something wrong to myself by um, smoking um, and I would feel really guilty if I did smoke so that has always prevented me from smoking. I have a little bit more now than I was concerned back then Back then, at 17, it was a puff and then a puff became a cigarette and a cigarette became a pack of cigarettes and then it's 10 packs a year and you know, it kind of escalates from there. But back then, it's like, oh, I'm going to quit this habit someday, you know? It's been a habit for five years now and I am trying to quit because I am thinking of the health complications, but I am thinking about them now and not before. I had enough. A lot of my friends used to smoke. They never stopped. They kept going. But um, I just lost the complete taste for it. I thought it was a waste of time and uh, it was a waste of money and uh, I was changing professions. So when I was changing professions that helped quit. So I was starting a new job in a new industry so I thought okay make a change, do something different and I went in as a non-smoker. That helped. When you've had enough cigarettes and you're kind of tired of it and you just don't feel like there's any point to it anymore and you're kind of sick of it. So you just stop for that day, that's it. And then you just have to keep going. It's not easy, but I still remember the day I stopped. It was the 23rd of December, 1998. Wow. I still remember that because I haven't smoked in since then. Honestly, it hasn't affected me yet um, because I, I, I am surrounded by smokers, but like, I think it's just purely my, you know, belief and value system and um, I, I stick to it you know I, I don't I don't go away from it so like because of that reason I, I never really felt the need to oh maybe I should try or you know um, it, it's it's always just been okay you don't smoke so you stick to it this may be my observation but I have observed that many people um, smoke as like a as like a coping mechanism like off like oh when they're stressed oh guys let's let's go out for a smoke you know kind of a thing um and also i feel like it, the the whole hab like people fall into that habit by trying it like the curiosity to try it you know like oh what does this feel like i kind of want to experience it but then that experience gets them hooked like for a lifetime i've noticed that and hence why i have felt like Okay, I don't want to even experience this. Some time ago, your friends would egg you on. If you're in school and things like that, there's a lot of peer pressure. Mm. You know, why don't you? And you feel very much part of a group when mm. you smoke. Mm. It's very easy. It's much easier to make friends when you're sitting outside somewhere and you're sharing a lighter or something like that. That still continues. It's Definitely. still there. Yeah. Uh, and you don't want to be the only person left out if everybody's going for a cigarette. Mm. But um, it's the smarter move. But it's better now than it was before because now they don't push you. Yeah. They kind of respect it if you say, I don't smoke. Yeah. They're like, yeah, it's fine. How I personally feel it helped me quit smoking is if someone asks you, do you smoke or would you like a cigarette? The simplest answer is no, I don't smoke. You don't say, I'm, if you, the moment you say I'm trying to quit or, you know, I've smoked too much and then they'll leg you on. Come join me. But if you just say I don't smoke, you don't smoke. That's it. You know, what initially started off as a puff or two of cigarettes, as I mentioned previously, then grew into a full-blown habit where I would, you know, chug a, in university, I would chug a massive mug of black coffee, have a cigarette and then stay up all night doing my work. 
and then that developed into not being able to cope with a stressful situation without having the cigarette first and that's one that's really held me back in my life uh, it's held me back in my decision making and it's also affected my health so i have considered quitting many many times but maybe not as seriously as i do consider it now it's difficult to quit when all your friends smoke it really is because it's available and it's there and you feel like you're not as close to them because they're having this and you feel like you're being left out it's good if you can find something else to take your mind off things you can throw yourself into work uh, for me it was starting a new profession so I had to spend a lot of energy doing that so I didn't really have time to go out and hang out with my friends too much so that kind of helped a little bit it's not immediate it's a gradual process but after you've quit smoking for a while everything smells better everything tastes better i mean food tastes so much better it's just everything tastes water tastes different and it's such a nice feeling because you get all your sense you feel like you got a new sense back the bad smells get worse of course but the good smells are so much nicer and uh, your eyesight improves it really does because you're consuming more water and more healthy aspects and nothing else that's coming into your body and when you're not around smokers second hand smoke affects your eyes it really does about 5 6 years down the line you start to see changes in your appearance in a big way uh your lips which were once a shade darker become lighter they become pink and you know nicer your teeth get better your gums look cleaner and things like this is this is a natural process these are things that you don't see when you smoke but the more you smoke it coats everything inside i think in terms of stamina when it comes to exercise obviously there's you know i was once sports captain in high school now i can barely run my 6 kilometers that i do every day you know but i have reduced i have greatly reduced the amount that i smoke uh, my pack a day has now become a pack a month maybe i only smoke when i'm around alcohol or in a bar or something so there are there are positive changes in my body that i feel um you know i can run a little bit easier i can my hair's growing back again uh like you said the lips the teeth like it's it's starting to come in like better now uh changes in my complexion so yes i would say even with that small reduction there are positive changes you really can't blame anybody for smoking smoking is a release it really is uh it's just that it's it comes at a price it's an addiction that grows into it and then it's you're not controlling it it's controlling you that that's what happens down the road but um, that's the reason why a lot of people smoke because they just want that break from whatever they are doing something a friend of mine told me a long time ago when i used to smoke and uh, I don't know if it's true or not but it really shook me. Uh it was about the cancer hospital. See, um you on a pack of cigarettes you get this lovely image of somebody who's uh not well surrounded by all the equipment and you know it looks very pristine. But in actual fact what I was told, I don't know how far this is true, was that the beds are so full that a patients call flow patients where they don't have beds for them, they treat them on the floor. So imagine being so sick that not only are you suffering from a really bad disease as a result of smoking you don't even have a bed to be sick on Okay imagine that or imagine a loved one that you can't do anything for and that really shook me up I I guess all what I can say is don't be afraid to be a cupcake in a world full of muffins you know um because yeah um it it might not it might be other people around you might have it as a preference but that doesn't mean that you have to make it your preference you know if we, if you don't want to start smoking just say that you don't want to set that boundary um and and also like you know the health implications like Rory said are quite bad so it's not just you hurting yourself it's you hurting everyone who loves you as well i hope i never ever smoke again i really don't want to take that chance and possibly develop this habit um now that i'm like you know not smoking i would like to keep it that way i can't put a timeline on my quitting smoking because see when i first started smoking I didn't know it puff would turn into a habit of 5 years. Yeah, I can't put a timeline, but I do hope to quit. Jeez.